everybody, welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how to make minestrone soup in the quick cooker. Um, you can also do this on the stove. So you're gonna do all the same steps, except you're gonna let it simmer for a while. Probably about 20 or 30 minutes if you're doing it on the stove. But the first thing that you're gonna do is I have this on saute. I started it a little early because it takes some time for some of these vegetables to go ahead and soften. So what I've started with in here are two tablespoons of really nice olive oil. I'm using a jacuzzi local olive oil. You put that in the bottom, let it get nice and warm. And then you're gonna add your celery and your carrots and your leeks. You're gonna do about one cup of chopped, uh, I'm sorry, two cups of thinly sliced leeks. Those are your onions. So they're like giant green onions if you've never seen a leek. You're gonna do about one large carrot and like two celery stalks. You wanna chop those up. You want them to really soften. The next thing that you're gonna put in is some tomato paste have about two tablespoons that I'm gonna put in. I have more than that sitting here, so I'm only gonna put about two in. And I'm gonna kind of loosen that up. As it hits that heat and some of the oil in there, it's gonna loosen up. The next thing that I'm gonna add is my garlic. I don't wanna add my garlic too quickly because I don't wanna burn it. So I have three cloves of garlic chopped or diced that I'm gonna put in here. And you know me, I always put more than I need to, so that's going in. And you're gonna, you're gonna smell that garlic once it hits the heat. And I'm trying to work that tomato paste into all these vegetables, that's why I'm moving stuff around so much in here. But you wanna cook that tomato paste just a little bit, because it's gonna help the flavor um, get enhanced. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, um, actually I'm going to do the dried herbs first. So anytime you're using dried herbs, um, I have one teaspoon each of dried basil and dried oregano. Um, you put it in between your hands and you're going to go ahead and um, rub your hands together. What that's going to do is it's going to release all the oils and the dried herbs. So I get that in there and get it nice and incorporated in. I'm gonna turn this saute off because I'm gonna start adding some of my other ingredients. So this is a very heavy vegetable-based soup. Um, if you're a vegetarian, you most very definitely can do vegetable broth. You don't have to do chicken broth. I choose to do that because I'm a meat eater. Um, the first thing I'm gonna put in is 28 ounce can of chopped tomatoes. I'm gonna get that all mixed up in here. It's very important with a quick cooker that you don't have anything burned on the bottom. So make sure that um, you're moving stuff around and making sure anything that kind of got a little stuck on the bottom um, gets released by the liquid that's in the tomatoes. The next thing I'm gonna put in is uh, one cup of chopped yellow squash. And this is one medium squash. And um, I have it cut in um, half moons. I also have one medium zucchini squash that I'm gonna put in there, green zucchini squash, also cut in half moons. I'm gonna mix that up in here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm adding all the vegetables in with the exception of the beans. In the quick cooker, the beans can kind of get a little mushy, so we're gonna wait until after everything's cooked to put the beans in. So now I'm gonna add about one cup of chopped uh, red bell pepper, and then one cup of chopped fresh green beans. Now green beans usually come pretty long, so we've chopped these up into like bite size. Um, it just makes everything about the same size that you have in your soup and makes it easier to eat. So once I got all my vegetables in there, I'm gonna add in four cups of my broth and one bay leaf. I'm gonna throw all that in here. And you're gonna have to stir it a little bit to get that um, tomato paste nice and incorporated into it. So I'm gonna just give it a good stir here, make sure that 
that gets going and Patches apparently needs his ball thrown. So he's in the back barking. All right, so this is like, there's lots of vegetables. I can see lots of vegetables in here. So the last thing that I'm gonna, well, I have two more things to do. The first thing is I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, obviously this is a, it's cold right now. So your salt and pepper isn't really gonna be too developed. So I would encourage you to put a little in now and then once it's done, check it again and make sure that you don't need to add more salt and pepper. So I'm gonna do a few just pinches of salt in here. And I used uh, salt-free uh, tomato paste. So I sometimes when I use salt-free stuff, it's great because then I get to control how much salt goes in. So I'm gonna put some fresh pepper in. And again, you can add more of this after you're done cooking. I'm gonna get that incorporated in here. And then I'm gonna put one cup of dilatini pasta, which is like the small macaroni that you use for pasta salad. Now the, the key to putting pasta in one of these quick cookers is making sure that it's under all of the fluid. You don't want anything on top of the fluid, otherwise it might not cook. So it's really good to make sure you kind of push it down underneath all of the fluid and make sure it's down in there. And you don't have a big pile of dry pasta on top. Okay, so I have all my ingredients in. I'm gonna go ahead and if Sean can give me the top. I'm gonna to put the top on the quick cooker. And make sure that this is nice and ready to go. All right, now I'm going to do it um, on a manual setting. It's gonna be for uh, at high pressure for about six minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it. I'm going to press start. It is going to take a little bit of time to get this to pressure because there's a lot of stuff in there. So don't be surprised if it takes 15 minutes for it to come to pressure. Sometimes 20. Depends if you put a little extra um, fluid in. Just make sure you don't fill your, cook, your quick cooker past the um, maximum level that you can make it. Once it's done, I'm going to let it naturally release for about two minutes. After two minutes, then I'm going to do a quick release. Once I'm done getting this um, all done, then I'm going to stir in the white beans, the, or the can of cannellini beans that I have, that I've oh. rinsed. And then um, I'm gonna check it for my salt and pepper. When you serve this, and I'll, we'll go back um, when we're done with this and we'll shoot a little bit more so you can see uh, us serving it. We're gonna serve it with some fresh Parmesan. Um, I've talked about it before, but fresh grated Parmesan is probably the best thing that you can have. Um, there are no preservatives in it, and it tastes fantastic. You can grate this a couple days ahead of time and use it um, through a couple days. And what you do, we use is we just get a block and we use one of these uh, fine grain planer graters. The other thing that you're gonna serve with it is some pesto sauce. You can get this almost at any grocery store. Um, this is just a regular pesto. They have different types of pesto, but you're gonna put a little bit of the pesto on top with some of the Parmesan cheese on top and serve it. You can serve it, if you're um, not eating carbs, you can serve it um, just the soup. Um, if you like bread, you can do a crusty bread, you could do a garlic bread, whatever you like. So we'll see you in a little bit when this is done. I'll show you how to put everything else in and to serve it up. See you soon. Hi everybody, I'm back. So I have let this cook for this, it came to pressure, cooked for six minutes. We let it go for two minutes after for natural release, release. And now we've done a quick release, which is pushing our button. And once that little knob goes down, the little red button, then you can open it. Be very careful when you open it so that you don't burn yourself with the steam. And here we go. Nice and steamy. Smells really good. I'm gonna give it a quick stir here. And then what, the last thing that I need to add is the can of white beans or cannonelli beans. I'm gonna put those in. I'm gonna stir those in. And then I'm gonna taste it. So a lot of times, um, especially when I'm using salt-free tomatoes or salt-free tomato paste, I need to add a little bit more of um, the salt into it. 
So I have my little tasting spoon here. Please be very, very careful because you can totally burn yourself. It definitely needs a little bit more salt. So when you're reheating this, because it totally, it, it is great for reheating, but because of the gelatini pasta in there, you might actually have to add a little bit more broth or water to it. Um, after you put it in the refrigerator, sometimes that pasta will soak up some of the extra fluid that's in your soup. So you might actually need to add some extra fluid to it. That's fine. Just put a little bit in there, mix it in, and then go ahead and heat it up in the microwave. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to put it in a bowl to serve it. And I'm gonna ladle it in here. And it's a good balance of veggies and a little bit of pasta. And then I have here some of the pesto that I showed you before. And I'm just gonna scoop a little bit on the top, maybe like a little, probably like a tablespoon right in the middle on the top. And then I'm also gonna put on some fresh Parmesan cheese. You can serve this with thin cut crusty bread. And there you got it. You have some nice soup here. Do you guys enjoy your soup? Please let me know if you like the recipe and I will see you again soon for the next demo. Bye.